briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. The crux of an intriguing property dispute case in Summit County, Utah, brings us to a critical junction in the United States judicial system. Mineral rights of a coveted property are under scrutiny due to the conspicuous absence of an original deed. The dispute landed on the desks of the district court, where the judgment leaned towards the appellees favorably. However, the door of contention was left ajar by the appellants, who ventured that the lawsuit was hamstrung by a limitation period as per the USC 28 Section 2409 A.F. The drama unfolded in the 1940s, when the Federal Farm Mortgage Corporation, FFMC, transferred a fee simple interest in the land to Hiram and Florence Newton. A decade later, the FFMC vested its mineral interest in the property to the United States through an unambiguous quitclaim deed. Subsequent lease agreements tethered the supposed mineral interest to alternate appellants. The property owners, the Newtons in the early 60s, transferred their interest to their family corporation, Hiram J. Newton and Sons Sheep Company. A decade on, the appellees boarded the bandwagon, leasing the entire mineral interest. Fast forward to 1976, the appellees initiated a lawsuit invoking the USC 28 Section 2409A to establish their mineral ownership. The appellants retaliated, stating that the suit was constrained by the limitations period, pointing to the potential constructive notice of the 1957 deed as per Utah's recording statutes. The district court, however, sided with the appellees, opting for a uniform federal interpretation, defying state law orientation. This interpretation offered that a stray deed doesn't put subsequent takers on constructive notice. Subsequent pleas for a summary judgment by the appellees found favor in the court, thereby barring all evidence proffered by the appellants surrounding the 1942 deed. This decision inevitably tipped the scales of justice in favor of the appellees, securing the title of the property for them and calling on the appellants to account for profits raked from the disputed mineral interests. In the final act, the case was remanded back to the district court to reassess the admissibility of the evidence, clearing that the statute of limitations did not restrict the case. This decision underlined the necessity of a proper application of federal rules of evidence, leading to a fascinating juncture in the annals of property rights litigation. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.